Okay, so everybody, last slot of the day, uh, lightning talks. Uh, we got actually four people signed up here. Uh, first one would be, um, oh, rules are six minutes. Um, and uh, I will, that will be hard and forced. Um, so ten, min, 10 seconds to the end of the talk, we're just going to stand up and applaud. So it's a very nice and winsome way uh, to cut you off. Um, okay, first off, Swante. What is this? Okay, I call it distributed ODF applications. Um, uh, where is it? Is it going this way? Okay. So from a bird build, um, perspective, right? ODF applications are just in. Can we, uh, Tossen, Tossen? I've got a screen problem. Can we switch it that it's fit? Sh should, should uh, it's uh, should switch the screen? It's uh, it's over here. So I'm, uh, yeah, I'm just a pedantic. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm waiting six minutes for. Brilliant thing. <laughs> well, um, I just leave it this way. It's it's good enough for me. Full screen. That's much better. But it's works like that. It should be. Wait a minute. No, then it's. Um, so the old setup. Or? Why is it not working? Like that. Okay. But but. the um, page here, you know, off page, you like. Fit page? Fit page is better. Fit page is good. Let me switch. That's much better. Okay, sorry. So I've got one minute left. <laughs> ah! <laughs> stop, stop. Okay, from a bird perspective. Okay, so every, 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 we have um, all our ODF applications Microsoft Office, uh, ODF Toolkit, and so on. It's always starting with you load the ODF file into yourself, and then you, they're in the state machine, the user macros, they're adding, deleting, or modifying um, the document, right? And at any given time, you flush it out, you save it, export it to another valid ODF. So this is, from a bird perspective, everything that LibreOffice is doing, right? Okay? Very abstract, right, because this is um, this is very important, okay? And the next thing is when we have multiple of these state machines working together, like here, uh, then, uh, and we want to collaborate in a, in a perfect sense, like we do with software, then we need to, um, you can think of even as, uh, not even as uh, three LibreOffice versions, or Microsoft LibreOffice, but it might be Git repositories. And look, this, about, this guy here is adding something, he's inserting a new second paragraph, and uh, the others are pulling these changes. And this one is just modifying the third paragraph. And this one is just doing nothing, just receives the changes, right? This is our goal. We want to go that direction. So currently, we are not able to receive any of these changes, these high-level changes. We cannot receive some XML snippets because in the internal model, we don't know anything about uh, parts. We can only load everything and uh, drop everything. So this is very, very important if we want to do collaboration um, that LibreOffice learns to, um, to accept changes. So these changes are just some high-level uh, fused uh, changes. So what I'm going to do is I'm currently working on uh, I did it tomorrow, the, uh, this morning, that this ODF XML grammar is a nightmare. It's a very huge text file with a lot of XML notes. So what I do to answer questions like, uh, what is the late, what is the, um, what is the minimal document? I load it in a graph database because this is exactly what uh, they can do. What is the low, uh, smallest ODT possible? Are paragraphs nested at all? And all these things, you have to look into this long text file. And this is horrible. So what I did is... Um, you see, using the graph database and making uh, visualize it. And this is only the table table element with all the child elements and uh, the red things are the attributes, right? You can even see it from here. So um, I, I'm going now to, to improve this graph because this is just an internal model. And uh, there are a few things that we have to, to, to uh, skip this. Um, <laughs> to, to, uh, to view better, but we have to extend this grammar. We have to have a better tooling. Otherwise, I mean, 
One, otherwise, we cannot cope this complexity, right? And this is, I think, this is the brilliant way to go using graph databases, annotate more, annotate these changes, because we think XML, oh, this, now we specified everything. But in our minds, in all the users' minds, the user changes are all the same. You can, in every ODF application, you can uh, add a paragraph, add a lead, a table, and so on. Or, like I said, modify, format, a paragraph ground. And we have to define these things, and we have to define it in an automatic way and specify this way. So we have something like ODF Git repositories, like we have real collaboration where you can, oh, here's my pull request, right? You have your ODF book outside, and as I read it and I said, oh, there's a typo, I've got a pull request to you, and you don't have any ideas, you can internally have ideas, but you, we should be able to have a collaboration as powerful or even more powerful than the Git. That's it, thank you. <laughs> okay. Oh, <there> <laughs> So I'm, uh, I'm having a quick talk about the state of LibreOffice at the city of Munich. Um, first of all, um, who am I? I work for the Linux team since 2016, uh, and um, I'm head of development for LibreOffice at the city of Munich and rep representing the city of Munich in the OB OSBA and also in the, in the advisory board of the TDF. And I'm also working on GIMP, Darktable, and a lot of other stuff, but mainly doing packaging. But um, you may ask, uh, wait, uh, didn't you decide to switch to Microsoft Office? <laughs> um, not really. The government only decided to switch to Windows, and uh, the city council will decide in November if they are going to switch or if they want to switch or not. So, uh, but even if we switch to, to Microsoft Office, um, we need LibreOffice for the next four or five years, and uh, at least two or three or maybe four releases. And so we are going to uh, continue the development as usual and uh, also continue our community efforts and uh, the advisory board membership. Uh, what have we done in 2017? Um, we started development of a new LibreOffice release based on LibreOffice 5.2. Um, we finally got a new build server, which improved building time a lot, uh, building four uh, releases at the same time. Um, we also started development for Volmux 18, um, which will be released on volmux.net. And uh, JMUX did a lot of work uh, upstream um, on scheduling and bug fixes. And uh, we also sponsored a lot of work um, at CIB and KDAB, um, mostly CIB, um, free rotating images uh, and also the border frames you talked about. Um, signature lines, as uh, Samuel uh, talked about today, and uh, improvements in hyperlinks, handling, um, KDE 5 plasma backend, which is based on GDK3, uh, a lot of work by KDAB in cooperation with CIB, and uh, more than 40 improvements in OOXML, and also many, many more bug fixes and performance improvements. And what is to be done in 2018? Um, we want to pr improve WebDAV support, um, polish with KDE 5 support, um, for the next Basis Client 6.0 release, which is based on or which does use KDE 5. Um, we also want to ro roll out LibreOffice 5.2.8. Um, all patches for this version are upstream and uh, backports are also available on our private branch. Uh, we are getting rid of more than two, 100 internal bugs, uh, fulfilling a lot of feature requests by, by our users, and uh, finally getting rid of LibreOffice 4.1 plus. 300 or something like that, backports and patches, which is diverging from 4.1, which is upstream. And we also are going to start uh, development for the next release, which is based on LibreOffice 6.1. Um, we want to make change tracking great again, <laughs> that it doesn't crash. And uh, <laughs> um, but we are going to pay for it ourselves. So. <laughs> 
um, more improvements of OOXML support um, and also add bug fixing and some user requests. And hopefully we can host a bug squashing party in Munich. Last year we didn't have a chance, but maybe next year. Oh, this year. <laughs> okay, that's all. Thanks. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see. Okay, <laughs> while Thorsten is preparing the um, a, 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 a website, hopefully, my website. Website? What website? I sent you a link to a site. Stop yeah, the clock. It's all on the slides. No worries. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, we're talking about GSOC. Um, as a pro uh, organization, we applied for uh, being accepted and um, application has been submitted. I have the dates here. Announcement, if we are accepted, will be on the 12th of February and student application follows between March 12th and 27. Uh, so we are uh, hopefully looking for a lot of mentors and uh, of course students, but since here are more mentors than students, uh, I am happy to uh, be able to announce, yeah, we have some uh, so uh, success that, that stories from you. last that, year. That could be you the next year. <laughs> so that, that's the, the successful projects from uh, from the last GSOC uh, um, season, and um, yeah. So um, so we've been uh, doing GSOC in one way or the other since I think 2008, back in the day with uh, with OO Build, and before that I was doing that I think two years with uh, with Sun at Open Office. So roughly I don't know. Let, let's make it 10 years of uh, of GSOC. Um, between, I think, between always between four and twelve students. Um, so it's a great opportunity both for uh, for mentoring, for getting into mentoring uh, for students. So if you know students um, in your community or um, uh, friends and family, encourage them to try GSOC. It's a great thing. Uh, you get paid for open source work. It looks great on your resume, um, and you get a T-shirt. <laughs> And um, that's yours? Is it really? No, the left side is for you. Left yeah. side is mine. Oh, cool. Uh, I got the left side and have two minutes left. Uh, um, the, I'm really happy to have the chance to advertise some ideas from the design team, um, which is um, we have a really large list of topics that uh, could be improved, for instance, change tracking, no question. Um, something uh, what I would like to highlight is uh, the addition thing. Addition means to integrate uh, our extensions more closely into the program. Integrating means at the place where you use a, a function, you get the chance to uh, add things from a third place, uh, our extension side, or if you are in a, in a company, you could uh, restricted to the company extension. For instance, if you are in the templates manager, you can click on the link to add a template. You don't need to go over the site. Should be a, quite an easy thing, uh, just a framework. It downloads uh, um, a file from a, a link, kind of uh, configuration should be behind it, and the dialogue. Sounds quite easy to me. Blurry shadows, uh, that's uh, something we really desperately need. We have a really hard shadow. A shape has a shape behind, and uh, that looks really terrible. Blurry shadows make the draw even better, if it's possible at all. Uh, in this um, sense, we could also improve uh, the, uh, the lines. Uh, if we have some kind of brushes so that lines get, uh, uh, looks like scribbled lines, it makes a tool a really great um, mock-up uh, creation tool. Font handling, I talked uh, this afternoon about font handling. We have some topics around font handling where mentors are welcome. Uh, I think students uh, should be 
really smart if they do work of that. Uh, next one, welcome screen is uh, two minutes left. Um, it's not really a welcome screen. We have a problem with um, user uh, configuration. We are still placing things in, uh, in the user directory under slash four. And everything what the user uh, configured themselves in the past is not overwritten. So if you update, you don't get the updated information. And that's not that good. The idea here behind is that you can uh, show a screen for the update uh, when the new uh, release is available, uh, what of the previous uh, configuration should be overwritten so that the user can say, yes, I accept it. And this dialogue could be used as well for uh, uh, welcome and tip of the day. Right, so this was all, all the user experience, um, uh, high level uh, great ideas um, that you can, can really make an impact with and a big splash. And the right side is a few, um, sometimes a bit more low level um, um, project ideas, just a random um, uh, uh, subset of the ideas page. Uh, PageMaker, this uh, document liberation project for import, uh, um, domain specific language for, for UI testing, this is um, to make it easier and quicker. Uh, and, and nicer to write UI tests. <coughs> Smart Art that got recently, the last year, had uh, the import finally done. So now it would be great if you could also edit that. Um, and uh, charts and Orcus. Orcus is a um, special uh, calc filter, import filter. Uh, Python support for uh, LibreOffice Eclipse. And VML import for Writer. VML is uh, part of the OXML uh, standard. Um, okay, and we're running out of time. So, um, yeah, just a summary and two links uh, to the resources. Please do go out and advertise, encourage people, encourage mentors, or mentor yourself, or be a student yourself. Thanks, everyone. Okay, and we have, I think, uh, Olivier? Okay, yes. Let's see if we can see. Great. So, uh, here we are. I, I wanted to show you. So, oh my God, sorry. Yes, uh, I would like to show you, uh, uh, everybody knows in the, in the work of LibreOffice that the help files are quite uh, hard to, to write. So uh, we had in the past a small uh, extension that uh, allows you to use a writer file and generate a XHP file, but uh, we had some issues with this uh, extension. We have some problems, so I decided to, uh, and one of the issues that you have to review the XML that is generated and sometimes fix uh, each of the points of uh, the, the tags. So um, I, I decided to look into Kate. Kate is the KDE editor, and uh, Kate has a very nice feature, which is some widgets that you can have here. And uh, when you click on the widget, you, you can generate all the XML and just um, uh, uh, insert the contents that you want. So I'm going to uh, just show you how it works. It's very simple. For example, I have this uh, 
uh, content, which is purely text. And if I want to start generating a specific uh, um, a, a help file, for example, I come here with this. Uh, oh, there is a. Uh, uh, there, there, uh, here, new HTTP file. So double click here, and then he it generates. It generates the um, the XML. Uh, I can uh, let me. Uh, so I can here in page topic uh, write anything I want. Okay, the page title also I can type anything I want, and the file name is automatically generated. So I want now this heading heading one. I want to generate the XML for this heading one, and I get here a specific widget. Okay, so H1, and it generates. Oh, I'm sorry. So I select, I select, and I double click on H1, and then it generates a uh, paragraph, role e equals heading, ID. Uh, this, this ID is the most uh, cumbersome activity that we have to do because we, each ID has to be unique. Level X equal one, XML, lang in US, and your content here. So if you uh, have, um, uh, for example, here, I want uh, to emphasize this, um, this uh, put emphasize into this uh, uh, string. I just double click here and it inserts the tags, okay? So, and then I want to transform that into a paragraph and double click and you have all the XML things that you need to do. So, quite a fast way to quickly get some contents and generate an HTTP file. Uh, and uh, most of the very boring things that you need to do uh, with the IDs, it's automatically generated. Uh, it's a set of JavaScript that runs in the text, and uh, you can have most of the uh, XHP uh, tags implemented here. So this is uh, uh, what I wanted to show. And uh, you can, uh, uh, there is a page in the wiki where I describe how it works. So no more excuse for uh, uh, lack uh, missing help pages. <laughs> okay, thank you. That was quick. Okay, thank you very much. Um, that concludes the very last session of the day. Thank you all of you for being here. Thank you all the speakers uh, for, uh, for great information, for great talks. Thank you, Fostem, for hosting us. And um, yeah, have a good evening and uh, a great uh, Sunday. I don't know, I think...